DTU NanoLab works on advanced development within microtechnology and nanotechnology. We have a 1,350 square meter clean room, which houses our high technology production facilities, which use international top class equipment. Our equipment and products are highly sensitive to external influences, particularly contamination with foreign particles. As both the equipment and products are very expensive, it costs a lot of money if we have to stop production because of alarms or contamination. For this reason, it's very important that you comply with a number of measures when you're going to work in our clean room. In a clean room, the number of particles has to be kept below a certain level. This is done in part by our ventilation system. Filtered air is blown in constantly, creating positive pressure that keeps the unwanted particles out. It's also very important that as few particles as possible are brought into the room via people and objects. Therefore, there are certain requirements for clothing, behavior, and the cleaning of objects that are brought in. There are some requirements and reminders that apply to everyone before entering the clean room. Don't smoke just before you enter the clean room. Don't chew gum or eat in the clean room. And there are no toilets inside the clean room. So it's a good idea to have eaten, drunk and been to the toilet just before you go into the clean room. You also have to wash your hands before entering. It's strictly forbidden to work under the influence of alcohol at DTU Nanolab. Your working clothes should be clean with no dirt or dust from any other sites. You must only bring objects that you need to use. All objects brought into the clean room require an approval from Nanolab and must be cleaned. If you only need to work in service rooms, then after special agreement, it's possible to enter through a service door. You will have to wear a special one-time use only suit. This is to prevent particle contamination from your own clothes. You also have to wear gloves, protective eyewear and shoe covers. These are all provided by Nanolab. If you have to go into clean room areas, the entrance procedure is different. Here, you'll go through the entrance known as the gowning room. You'll be given a blue suit, which you should first unpack when you reach the gowning room. You'll also be lent a pair of clogs. You're allowed to bring a mobile phone into the clean room if it's on silent mode. However, you're not allowed to use the mobile phone inside the clean room. Instead, you must go into the gowning room to use the mobile phone. When you've finished your call, you must put on new gloves. The clean line is the bench. Make sure you don't sit on it before you have the suit on. You have to put your clothes on in the right order. Hood, suit, boots and gloves. Please make sure that the suit and boots don't touch the floor on the dirty side of the bench. This might require some practice. Use a beard cover if your beard is more than 3 to 4 millimeters long. You must also wear glasses, your own or a pair of safety glasses. Remember to check that your clothes are properly fitted before you leave the gowning room. Remember to use plasters if you have any cuts on your hands. Bacteria thrive in the warm, moist plastic atmosphere inside a plastic glove. In some cases, it might be necessary, for example, to bring working drawings on paper. However, the paper can contain a large amount of particles that are harmful to our production. Therefore, you must laminate the paper before you bring it into the clean room. The laminated paper must also be cleaned just like any other items brought into the clean room.
When you're inside the clean room, you must open and close the doors slowly. And don't open two adjoining doors at the same time. The doors must be closed in the room you're working in. Always use calm and slow movements and perform your work at a quiet pace. All of this is to prevent particles being whirled up. We use many hazardous chemicals and gases and therefore we have an extremely sensitive fire, gas and ventilation alarm system. So it's very important not to touch or switch off technical installations without prior agreement. And never strap things onto gas tubes. This also means that you must pay extra attention as to how you move around and with what. There are two types of alarms, both of which mean that you must leave the building. The alarm that goes like this, with breaks in between, indicates that people should calmly leave the building through the gowning room. The second type, with no pauses, indicates that everyone should immediately abandon the building by the nearest exit and wait at building 358. Inside the clean room, we distinguish between the service rooms and the clean rooms where the work with wafers is done. You must only be in the clean room if you have work to do there. Take particular care if you come from a service room and maybe even have sat on the floor. You could risk bringing many particles in with you that can destroy the products. If you suspect that your suit has become contaminated, you must change it. It's important to plan work so that drilling and sawing are minimized. If this is unavoidable, it's best to do it in a service room. If you do work that generates heat, then it requires a prior approval. Often, some of the work can be done and prepared outdoors. All chemicals, materials and devices used in the clean room must be approved in advance by the facility department. For example, silicon sealant isn't allowed, spray contaminates and the smell of glue can trigger an evacuation of the clean room. And that's expensive. Always make sure to clean up whilst working and when you've finished your work. In particular, escape routes, meaning particularly corridors, must be kept free of materials and articles. When the workday is over, remember to check that you're logged out of the system. Remember to always ask Nanolab staff about anything you're in doubt about.